one of the things I realized is when you're here for 10 years, some of these couples that either I officiated their weddings or as today I baptized a child, I remember them when they were in high school. And now they're married and I'm, you know, I officiated their weddings and now I'm here baptizing their children. So um, you think about that and you think, wow, in life of a parish. But also the fact that, uh, you know, as I celebrated Mass today and realized when you look out into the congregation, you know, how many of these people you get to know by name, being here a number of years, and you know them by their first name. And you realize whether you baptize or you've married, the, officiated their weddings, or the fact that you've buried their loved ones, you, you come to know them more personally as a pastor. And I think that's one of the things I like to say is that being here uh, past 10 years has been certainly a delight, a delight for me. And I really enjoy being here at, at St. Anne's. The Eucharist is the center of this parish life, and you can sense that. If you look at a wheel and you look at the spokes, you know, the, the center is the Eucharist. And everything shoots out from that center uh, comes from what they receive at that altar. And so whether it be school, faith formation, or parish organizations, even the parish fair next week, the Eucharist is the center. And I want to uh, thank all the parishioners in St. Anne's Parish for the past 10 years and hopefully for many more years to come. Hi. I am Sue Cosman, and I have been a member of St. Anne's Parish for a long time. I was baptized here, I made my first Holy Communion here, I was confirmed here, and I graduated from eighth grade. When I was making my first Holy Communion, I was the last class at, to make it at the St. Anne's Church on Willow Avenue. We had a group picture taken at the St. Anne's Shrine, which was at the old church by the parish house adjacent to the cemetery. We live halfway between this edifice and the old building that was the first St. Anne's when the parish first started, up on the top of Oregon Trail there, the old farm. So we've been around a while. At the old church on Willow Avenue, the church was burned down it was because the church was very old. It was made out of wood, and the Castle Sheen and Firemen made three attempts to set the church on fire. Uh, when it finally took, the flames went up, and everyone in Castle Sheen was at the, across the street at the school watching the fire burn. My family was at my neighbor's home. We were in the backyard with our lawn chairs watching the fire. Uh, take place. It was a very sad time because we, a lot of people spent a number of years at the old church and then we had to move on to the new church. But I understood when they tried to burn the old church down, the confessional wouldn't burn. It had already, <laughs> I guess, been through the fires of hell. <laughs> Around 19, I guess it was 1977, I came to work in the rectory, and that was the best job I ever had. Uh, worked in the rectory for 26 years uh, with Kitty Williams, Jerry Maluli, really fine, fine people. And would you believe three girls got along fine? No arguments, just we had a job to do and we enjoyed the work. Father, I have a question. I said, we just moved here, and we're, the baby's coming in a couple months, and we need a parish. And I said, we've been to Thomas More and here. And I said, I don't know where we belong, really. And he just jumped in. He said, you belong to us. And I said, ooh, that's OK. So since then, we belong to say. them. But uh, that's what I said. And it's been, it's been wonderful. And it has been a wonderful experience. Uh, my children were baptized here, made their confirmation, uh, went through to sixth grade up in our school over the hill. The old school was built in 1912. And right now, uh, when the school was demolished, it is now the plaza. There was also a special education building down at the school, but that is no longer there. And I can still remember Phil Murray, and God bless him, he was the best man for the miners and, you know, with the workers. And I thought, oh, this is great. 
I would listen to all those stories. And as we rode along 88, my dad, he knew where every opening was for the mines all the way out. And, uh, and Phil Murray's name always came up. It always came up. What a wonderful man he was. And as a kid, I thought, well, maybe he's a, I heard his name so much. I said, maybe he's an old uncle, I don't know, or he could be a pope because our house was always loaded with, it had a picture of a pope on our wall, and the current president, Roosevelt, was all, I thought Roosevelt was somebody important to one of our family members, but Phil Murray was right up there with him. And when I came and I saw that Bill Tower for the first time, I thought, oh, my dad would love this. The parish fair, that was a big thing in our life. Parish fair, I think 40 some years now, and I've been in it about 35 or so. It's, it, it was the big project for spring. And uh, also, you'll remember my first husband, Chuck Mullaney, who we called a Mr. Fair. He was so dedicated and just, uh, you know, our whole life revolved around the fair. My two girls were not allowed to get married a week or so before fair, or, well, they could get married after. But uh, both weddings were scheduled, one in August, one in May. But, uh, there, you just couldn't do anything but do carnival. Uh, and I would say anybody who worked carnival, or even a short time, made friends. I have some lifelong friends that I met working and volunteering. One of the nicest things about the early fairs, oh, I forget what the year it was, I was, we were closing up. I used to run the over and under booth all the time. We all, we're all closed up and get ready to leave and we're standing up, they were gonna have the drawing. And they pulled the third prize, they pulled the second prize. Pulled the first prize, D Granny. And I'm standing there, D Granny. Ah, that's my wife. Oh, we were winners. <laughs> Used to put more down on the big six than we took in sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, it has grown. And a lot of credit goes to the Mullaney's. Chuck Mullaney was a real driving force for the fair in the early days. I would like to comment on the two pastors I worked for, uh, Monsignor Rice. Um, I wrote about Monsignor. He was a brilliant administrator, a good pastor, and a controversial person. He was a supporter of labor, but he was also really tough to work for. We, uh, at one time, we told him, well, there was something we were talking about, and we told him that maybe we'd form a union, the secretaries. And he said, oh, that's okay. He says, I'll just eliminate your jobs. <laughs> now, this, this is the labor priest. But, but he was, you know, he was just unique, one in a million. Father Harkins. It was great. Father Bergman was great. You remember Father Breyer, so likable, and we all loved him. He was sharp, he was a hard worker, and he was lots of fun. Now, he could charm money from anybody for the needs of the church. He would ask for the smallest thing from the altar and there would be people waving a checkbook as soon as mass was over to see who could be the first one. He just had that wonderful, uh, charming way of doing things. He was down to earth and not afraid to work. He was one of us. Okay, here we go. We're playing big note now. And 34. I, 21. So do you, did you make pierogies at home? Oh, yeah, she and did. Sometimes the people needed them, and they didn't have enough or something. And two of us would sit up till 
maybe 12, 1 o'clock, making pierogies one night. Would we make 20 dozen? Or was it, no. Well, that was getting the thing for a lot of churches. I mean, it was a money maker. Yeah. So it was a ch cheap way to get a cheap labor. You know? Yeah, you can't beat the labor cost. <laughs> Nobody's organized. I was a retreat promoter for uh, oh, a lot of years. In fact, uh, I made somewhere around 40 retreats, and uh, Bob Kovacs, he, he's the star retreat maker here. He made 50 retreats. <laughs> but we went in the days when we had 126 men would go on a retreat. I worked at a bank in Bridgeville. When we'd have our annual novena, I always made it, and I would bring maybe four or five of the women from the bank and tell them, come and pray because St. Anne never let me down. I, I still say uh, that in Novena every night. Wow. I, I just can't get away from it. It's uh, because she's helped me, helped me and uh, get through a lot. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's been a blessing being here. It has been a blessing. The holy name they used to put on the uh, breakfast for the servers. And then, and then make the seven church visits on Holy Thursday. Well, the way the churches are now, most of them lock up by 12. And so I'd make a list up. I'd call the churches to find out how late they were going to be open. And then a week or so before Holy Thursday, she and I would make a dry run because some of those lots aren't that easy to get into with a bus. The social um, service worker was new, I think, in the time period that I was here. Charlotte helped everyone, and she had a real feeling, a real sense if you needed something, and, and she, she would reach out. The Christian Mothers was very active, uh, you know, 30 years ago. The other uh, activity which uh, is a small scale, is the over 50 of singles group. We had some great nuns. Sister John Ann probably was the salvation of my son. She made very sure he learned math. He's a vice president of a bank. He learned the math. Thank the Sister John Ann. Sister Concepta was a, a great principal. We had a lot of, we had a lot of good nuns, but uh, of course we all know what's happened to that sort of thing now. They're, if they're not an administrator somewhere, they're not, there's very few of them teaching anywhere, but we do have some good here, teachers here at St. Anne's, or St. Anne's wouldn't still be in business. So. Uh, one person that comes to mind is Mary Fay. She was a teacher. She took our young people and taught them how to read, and she loved them, and they loved her. She also was speech teacher in the school and uh, worked for years, uh, and, and I'm sure she wasn't paid. She was just a great, great ambassador for St. Anne's. St. Anne's family picnics started up again beginning in 1987. This was 1988 at the Knights of Columbus Grove, close to South Park. Sunday Mass was the first priority. Being an outside event, the Mass seemed particularly precious. The ceremony, the sermon, the music, Holy Communion, all seemed to be enhanced because it was God's great outdoors. After Mass, there were outdoor games. And there were indoor games. G-59. G-59. Whenever food was involved, we can always count on the Dorfners, Marty and Audrey. Okay, let's go. 
There was lots of time for chatting. You need a little adder freeze, huh? Oh, look, we've got, we've got a camera on us. Hide the water. Holy water. There was lots of time for dancing. All in all, it was a good time had by all. I think we should mention our music directors. They uh, provide, if you've gone to visit another church, you just shake your head and th thank goodness we can go back to St. Anne's and hear some good music. Well, we had, um, and this goes way back, Tall and Nichols. While he was here, he provided some fantastic music and he had a little symphony group and they used to play some really fine music for us. Michael Ross, everybody loves Michael Ross. I mean, he is just the dearest man. And he was like a firecracker. You often didn't know what Michael was gonna do or say. Great musician, just great. We miss him. But we have a new guy. We have Luke, who is talented beyond anything that I ever believed, and a fine voice, and he's just taken right over with the music. Well, on the way over, Colleen mentioned she remembered my two oldest boys' band. He even remembered the name, and they've been disbanded for how many years? They used to get a lot of uh, weddings to play at because of the parish, parish here, you know, the parish, because they knew us and knew them, and, and they didn't call them, and they, and they were pretty darn good, I have to say so myself. Rudy Richter is a one-man army. He has decided his goal, and he wants to save the school single-handedly if he has to. He runs uh, some charitable events for them. He makes donuts and sells them for them. And he's our parish fair chairman for the past six or seven years. And, and he is everywhere. He, he works every booth, every function. He's a person that is truly an example of what the people of St. Anne's are like. It's been a real honor and a humbling privilege, if you will, to be to have been assigned here as your pastor during your 125th anniversary celebration. This special moment in our parish's history has given us all a chance to reflect upon uh, the hard work, the faith, and the dedication of the many priests, religious women, and dedicated lay people who have worked so hard to make this parish a special faith community. And it has also given us the impetus and the inspiration uh, to work very hard for a brighter tomorrow uh, for the future of St. Anne Parish. Is there any way to include all the folks who have kept our church alive and vital? Probably not. There are many more who have aided the church throughout the years. All your contributions are deeply appreciated.
And I can tell you that every day was a new adventure.